Okay, so how far should I be able to hit my 7-iron is a super common question both here in a studio like mine and online in the comment sections. And mostly people just want to know if one, their technique or their equipment or their golf ball choice is on the right planet to be giving them the appropriate yardage. They don't want to be leaving yardage on the table at their current speed. So how do we get a general idea for how far you should hit the ball at various club head speeds? And obviously you can take a super strong lofted club and hit it a club further. We know that. We're talking about how do you hit a ball appropriate to your club head speed that has a reasonable peak height so it will actually stop on the green and a ball flight that you could actually use on the golf course. Obviously if I take a seven iron at five iron loft, it's gonna go further, but that's not really the point. So a number that I've come up with recently that I think works pretty well is your club head speed with a seven iron times 1.9. And that gives you an idea of a pretty optimized ball, certainly not like a, a new key seven iron, a very functional seven iron. Um, that's how far it should carry, club head speed times 1.9, given a nice amount of peak height, descending angle, spin, just a good overall ball flight that goes pretty far. So let's start to test that out. I'm gonna start it off at a very uh, slower end club head speed. Let's just say if you're a little bit, little bit on the slower side, how far should you be hitting your seven iron? Let's try to aim for high 70s uh, club head speed. Okay, pretty good. Kept it just under 80 miles an hour. So let's say for our purposes, we'll round down slightly because a Foresight machine will read club at speed slightly faster than a TrackMan. So let's just call this 79. And let's multiply that by 1.9. And it's saying we should get 150. And we did pretty much get 150 out of that. So we got 150, but we got it by having a peak height that is at least equal to or above the club head speed. It's a nice way to know that you're at least hitting the ball high enough. That ball is gonna stop reasonably well on green from 150 yards. We're delivering an amount of loft that from what I see between 25 degrees and 28 degrees is usually pretty good depending on your speed, higher for uh, lower speed, lower for higher speed. Uh, we're in that range. We got a little bit of a descending angle of attack. So that ball flight is quite functional. 84 feet in the air, we've hit 150 yards. I haven't even quite swung 80 miles an hour with the seven iron. It's pretty good. So let's take it up to 90. 90 miles an hour with the, the seven. This would be certainly above average speed. Where we were technically just now was slightly above average as well, but 90 would be some pretty good speed. Six point nine. Okay, let's stop there because that was a pretty good one. So again, we'll round down slightly just to account for how different launch monitors measure speed. Let's go to eighty-six. We're going to multiply that by one point nine, and we get one sixty-three, which we basically achieved again. And so what you'll see is the numbers. A lot of these things are behaving similar to what we saw at the lower speed. We just have a little bit more height to the ball now. Again, it's higher than our club head speed by quite a bit. Hundred foot peak height at one hundred and sixty-four yards is going to stop on the green very nicely. We're still hitting down on it. We're still delivering an amount of loft between 25 and 28. This is a good ball flight. So if you swing at this speed, 165 yards or so, low 160s, pretty appropriate. Yes, you can hit it further, but is it the most functional ball flight? Not necessarily. Okay, let's go low 90s this time. Okay, good. 92-ish. Okay, so at 92, let's call it, times 1.9, we get 175 yards. And again, we're pretty much there. I'll, I'll round it back to 175 because I turned that over a bit right, so you probably get a little extra yardage. Uh, but again, peak height at 109, plenty of peak height. 24.7 deliver loft is good. We got a good launch angle, good amount of spin. It's a very functional ball flight. Someone who swings around 92 miles an hour with a seven iron, Mid to high 170s is a very appropriate amount of distance. I think that would be a very accurate, playable way uh, to let you play at a variety of courses. If greens are firm, you'll still land it on the green just fine. Uh, and you're certainly not gonna be spinning it off the green if it's a softer course, very functional. So last, I'm gonna kinda go up to my full speed, which would be about 100 miles an hour with a seven iron. And let's see how this factors in at the, uh, the highest end of speed. That should be pretty close. Okay, so again, let's call it let's call it 100 to account for different launch monitors. Let's multiply that by 1.9. 
190 yards, which is pretty much exactly what we got. Peak height is plenty. I mean, I could probably afford to hit the ball a bit lower, but at the highest ends of speed, unless you are able to use skill a bit to reduce the ball flight, you're gonna hit the ball high because there's a lot of ball speed there. Um, so again, we kept the dynamic loft around that 25 number. The launch and spin are pretty good again and carried it a number that I think is appropriate for that amount of club head speed. So, you know, there's guys on tour that swing quite a bit faster than this and they're capable of hitting a seven iron more than 190 yards, I'm sure. Um, but these are some realistic ranges. I think we're kind of in the high 70s, the mid 80s, the low 90s, and then up to 100. These are the distances I would say I aspire to see someone hit it when they come in here, either for a lesson or if we're doing, you know, some equipment changes or a little bit of both. Um, it's not really about managing expectations. I think it's just what's, what makes sense um, distance wise. Because we all go out and play golf with people that I hit my 7 or 170. It's like, okay, should we be chasing this person's distance? Or is that person getting that distance by hitting a huge swooping draw? Are they de lofting it? Are they playing very strong lofted irons? You know, are they hitting at that 170 with a uh, 100 foot peak height and a nice descent angle? Maybe not. So important to have these numbers in mind. Again, this is not exactly. Uh, hard and fast science, but if you take your club head speed with the 7 iron, multiply it by 1.9, you should have a pretty good idea of how far you should carry, not total, how far you should carry your 7 iron.